we're finally here. <laughs> it's time to fill the last spread of my first ever study sketchbook. The thing is, I like to keep different types of sketchbooks at the same time, and each of them has a different purpose. So I have some that are for more fun, low pressure type things, others where I do more serious finished work, and I even have some tiny ones for when I'm on the go. And the main goal of this sketchbook has been to study anatomy. This sketchbook means a lot to me because I've seen myself getting better and better every single time that I pass a page. And now that we got to the last two pages, I really want to challenge myself to draw two of the hardest references that I could find. So in the words of the famous modern poet Eminem, get ready because shit's about to get heavy. <laughs> I want to make sure that I map out the space that the drawing will need, so I end up with a proportionate illustration. I'm going to lightly make a rectangle for that. I'm also applying washi tape so that when I start rendering and adding values, I end up with some crisp, clean lines. Now that we have that ready, it's drawing time. But before making any marks, I want to spend a moment studying my reference. I can see that the leg that is pointing up ends at the vertical center line of the photo and the knee of that leg is roughly around the horizontal center line. So I will divide my rectangle in four parts as a starting point. Once I have that, I'm starting to very lightly map out where that leg and knee are. I'm also squinting and looking at the negative space that's created at the top of her arm to map out its proportion. And I'm going to continue to do that to correctly place the figure in this space. I can feel that I'm a bit nervous about this drawing, and I think that one of the issues is that I have set too high expectations for what I want this spread to look like. Setting such high expectations can be tricky because I feel stiff, anxious, and sort of afraid to mess it up. I need to remind myself to keep calm and remember that the result is only a small part of why I love to draw and why I want to improve my skills. I love to draw because it makes me feel happy, and of course, if the result is good, I'll feel very good about myself. But it's not all about the result, it's about the process. I'm starting very lightly, and as I get more confident with what I see on my paper, I start to darken a few areas. But at this point, I'm still not married to anything that's on the paper. I'm being very careful and making sure that my negative spaces match my reference. So at this point, no line is final or too dark. I'm just trying to find where the figure is on my paper. This reference is quite challenging for me because there's movement and twists in the form and I want to make sure that I capture that. I also feel I jumped into this first reference with very high expectations and that's holding me back a little bit. I feel a bit too afraid to mess up the last page of this sketchbook that's been so meaningful to me and I just want to surprise myself with my improvement so I feel I'm not being certain enough about the marks that I'm making at this point. I'm a bit too much in my head, but it's hard to get out of that place once you're in it. And the only way out is through it. So I'm just gonna keep on simplifying what I see and the space around the figure I'm trying to draw. And this is something I learned while using this sketchbook. Even when you feel like you improved your skills, it's still possible to have some days where you just feel off your game and your drawings just aren't working. This can get pretty frustrating, but the only way to improve is by failing and failing repeatedly. Learning to be okay with failing is without a doubt one of the most useful skills that I've gotten out of this sketchbook. I feel like I've learned more from each failure than I did from each success. So I'm just gonna continue to struggle with this reference and not give up. There's something that's not quite letting me continue to the next stage here. So I'm still working very carefully and very lightly trying to not get too caught up on the details, but trying to make sure that the overall shapes of my figure look correct to me. I'm still focusing on the negative spaces, but I'm also trying to understand how the body in my reference is twisted. I'm looking out for the extended ribs, the pull on the top of the arm, and the bend on the waist. I'm really focusing hard on these areas and looking back and forward between my drawing and my reference. But I'm still not looking for any details, just overall shapes and feeling of the body. I'm feeling much more confident with what I see on my page, so I'm starting to darken a few of the lines. But now I feel like there's something off with the leg, so I'm even now changing and readjusting. Now that I'm happy with the construction of the body, I start rendering and focusing on the small details. I like to start with the features of the face. 
but it all just feels too bright for me, so I want to add a light value throughout the whole space. To do that, I'll use graphite shavings and a brush to lightly add value. I've been using this technique only a few times, so it's still looking a bit choppy and uneven, but I'm trusting the process. I love doing this and I want to get better at it because it's such an effective way to add some of those initial values. I'm essentially using graphite powder as if it's paint, and I'm painting the values on. It looks really patchy at this point, so I'm gonna use my neater eraser to lighten a few areas and make everything look a bit more even. And now I'm actually gonna use an eraser to bring back some of those whitest whites that I see on my reference. Now that I have this base and I'm happy with it, it's time to darken it more and add deeper values. But I'll do this one step at a time, so I'm trying to build the values slowly and carefully. Also paying attention to the shapes and the edges that I see on the shadows. I sort of want to soften what I've done just a little bit, so I smudge it a little using the same brush that I used before. And I just continue to slowly build up the values, going darker and darker every round. I want to make sure to preserve the lightest areas, so I keep using my eraser to clean them up and make sure that they're as light as possible. And I continue to add darker and darker values to my drawing, making sure I'm using my whole value scale. I feel like I don't have enough medium values, so I want to use my blending stump to pull some of the darkness to areas I feel like need to be a bit darker. And I'm almost done, and I'm loving how it's looking so far. But I want to create a few more dark edges and add a bit more darkness to some areas. I also want to make sure that my highlights are really standing out, so I'm going to use a bit more of the graphite powder to add a bit more darkness around it. This will make them really pop. And I really want to have very clean highlights, so I'm going to use my mechanical eraser to clean this up. Of course. <laughs> Whatever, I'll just use a small eraser to clean it up. <laughs> I don't know why this keeps happening to me with the mechanical eraser. Let me know in the comments if you know how to stop this from happening, because it's so frustrating. Okay, here's some peeling content for you. This time it worked out pretty good. I didn't rip the paper at all for the first time ever, so I guess I'm getting better at that. It's a bit messy because of the graphite powder, so I'll use my eraser to clean around the drawing a bit. And honestly, I should have stopped here. <laughs> but yeah, I just felt like I needed some wider areas on my highlights, so I decided to pull this old white marker that I have and... It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Okay, so I panicked a bit, but just a bit, just a bit, just a little bit. <laughs> and I went for a brush quickly and tried to move the pigment around all the white areas, sort of to try and fix it. But yeah, I guess it's not completely ruined, so it's fine. <laughs> I sort of managed to get away with it. But this is what I mean when I say you learn more from your mistakes than from your successes. Next time I want to use this marker, <laughs> I know I need to push a bit of the ink on a piece of paper away from my drawing <laughs> and use a brush to apply it to my drawing. But I'm honestly super happy with how this first drawing turned out, with mistakes and all. It was a real challenge and it had a few scares in the end, but I enjoyed myself so much and I love the result. So time to move on to the next one. So I found this reference on Pinterest and I saw a few people try to draw it, so I was like wondering if I would be able to draw such a foreshortened action pose. I wasn't sure if I would be able to do it, so I felt myself starting to procrastinate and then I just asked you guys over on Instagram stories if you thought I should draw this reference for a bit of encouragement and accountability. And it worked! <laughs> Sometimes a bit of accountability can do wonders for my procrastinating tendencies. Now, this is by far one of the most difficult things that I've ever tried to draw. I started by creating an envelope around all the parts of the body to start getting an idea of where things are. Now that I have a starting point, I start comparing what I have on my paper with my reference. Using my pencil to measure the angles around and between what I see. I'm using an H pencil and just being very, very light with my lines, just barely applying any pressure on my paper. Because I'm 100% positive that I'll continue to move and edit everything around it, and I just don't want to use dark lines that can ruin my paper. 
I just keep on comparing with my reference and adjusting everything time and time again until it looks right to me. And I feel a bit more confident about what I have, so I start to slowly add more of the smaller details. But this is why you wanna hold off until the last moment to start adding details because I'm just refining and cleaning my sketch and I notice the head is not in the right placement. I notice this because the negative space between the leg that is closer to the head and the head is much shorter in my reference that I have on my paper. So basically it's time to redo that and place it in the right position. And I guess this constant editing of the sketch can be a bit frustrating, but this is just part of it. I've learned to not get too attached to anything at this stage of my sketching process and to not focus on the details, but more on the bigger picture. That's exactly why I keep my lines light and soft just in case I need to delete it all and start again. I'm gonna check and double check with my reference to figure out what the negative space behind the head looks like. And at this point, I'm only focusing on the negative space. No details, just the spaces around what I see. I used to struggle so much with keeping a consistent sketchbook practice in the past. I actually don't think I've ever finished a sketchbook before two years ago. And at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that recently I've been trying to keep different types of sketchbooks at the same time. And this has been a game changer. It has made it so much easier for me to stay consistent with my sketching. Basically, I've just been picking up whichever sketchbook suits my mood on a particular day. Like when I'm not really feeling it, I just grab my no pressure sketchbook and I have a chill session, find reference photos that make me smile, doodle and have fun. And if I dare to do more finished work, I have a sketchbook for that. But when I'm in the mood to actually improve my skills, I switch to my study sketchbook. Here I focus on whatever it is I want to improve at the moment. Like right now it's been anatomy. The reason why I like to work on all my basic skills is that I'd like to be able to create my own illustrations and stories one day, but I've been feeling like my skills didn't quite match my vision, <laughs> and for a long time I felt very frustrated about that. I would try to work on a creative illustration and struggle for the longest time, finish the artwork and hate it, <laughs> because my skills just weren't able to match my fantasy. <laughs> but I've just decided that instead of being frustrated, I'll focus on improving my basic skills. Right now, I'm working through anatomy, but I also want to refresh my portraits, animal anatomy, perspective, color, and other things. And I'll be sharing all of that here on YouTube. My dream is to be able to bring my more creative ideas to life and to have the skills to do this and enjoy myself. So I'm trying to build a base of knowledge that I can access when I want to work on more creative work. So far, this part of the journey has been truly amazing and I've been feeling so much more confident the more I learn. And I'm not sure when I'll feel ready to tackle more creative illustrations, but for now, I'm loving the journey. And I feel like building a consistent and healthy sketchbook habit is going to be crucial for that. That's why I love having different sketchbooks for different things, because it helps me honor the level of motivation and energy that I feel on a particular day. It has helped me keep things fresh and exciting because I can switch it up based on how I'm feeling. This way, I actually stick with my sketching habit because it adapts to my creative needs and moods, and you should totally give it a try. It might just be what you needed to build a sketching habit and get to the skill level that you want. At this point, I'm having a blast and I'm really loving how this sketch is turning out. I feel like I can start being a bit bolder with my lines and add a bit of values. But I also start this next step really carefully and slowly build up my values. I want the face to be the most detailed part of this drawing and the rest to almost feel like a sketch. I feel with the first drawing on this spread I went a bit more realistic with the rendering style so for this one I want to challenge myself to try something different and make it almost look like a sketch. And now you can really see what I meant with final lines. I'm making them much darker and deeper to define these areas because at this point I'm feeling very sure of the construction of my sketch, so I don't feel afraid to ruin it.
I love how this drawing turned out. <laughs> and I just want to add a bit of humor and add a text bubble that says ouch. <laughs> so I mocked it up on my iPad and when I was happy with it, I started to slowly add this into my drawing. And this is how my final spread turned out. I'm honestly so happy with this and I can't believe how far I've come since the beginning of this sketchbook. I feel like I've grown so much and learned a lot to the point where I feel just so much more comfortable drawing the body. And in this video, I share with you the top five mistakes I was making and how I learned to fix them to improve my anatomy drawings.